Hi, it's Leo from Me by Marley and today I'm going to start my videos slightly differently. I was really fortunate that the IOD team sent me over um, some of their new um, Q2 release to try. Um, I think I'm the only person in the UK to have them. So this video, I because I made the two, I made all the videos for IOD, that I'm lumping them together into you know what makes sense so this video that you're about to watch you're going to see me working with the serpentine stamp and the Bella stamp and you can see what I've done and um, hopefully it'll give you some inspiration on how you can reimagine your furniture so um, I'll see you at the end Hi, it's Leo from Made by Marley and today I'm really excited. I have the new um, Serpentine stamp from ILD. I think I'm the only person in the UK that's actually got it. Um, and I'm going to show you uh, me doing a piece of furniture um, with this stamp. Um, my piece of furniture is a mid-century modern piece of furniture, which is not something I would generally do, but I'm going for quite a stylish sort of less vintage look so this is mid-century modern and um, we're going to prepare it by lying it on its back and then I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm going to do. So this is the serpentine stamp just look at it it's glorious I can imagine this on lots of fabrics on walls and you know what I think it'd be, it'd be really good as texture if you're going to paint a piece and put some texture on it then do something over the top of it just you know here and there for some texture I think this will be a really good one but what we are going to do is I'm just going to explain it to you is because I don't want to have you know square 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 I'm going to put it on like it's a snake so I've marked this side and this side so I know that this is the way it's going because these are the way a snake goes and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do copper leaf to where the join and the join is on both sides, I'm going to do copper leaves. So I'm just going to draw out where I think I would like it with some chalk. Something like this. We might have to do another line up here if our stamp's not long enough, but that's the sort of general sort of thrust of what I'm going to do. So I'm going to have to start, you know, here. I'm not going to worry about this part up here because our copper leaf is going to come because this is square it doesn't matter so much because when we stop here we all we're still going to have a join here but that's okay we're not going to have this part here that isn't going to show so i'm gonna i've got a a brailer here and some brown and some black chalk paint and i'm going to roll this onto my stamp but i'm not going to roll it on my piece just in case because ask me why so i'm going to sit this down here and move my paints out of the way now i want it predominantly a little because i've done the legs of the piece brown i want it predominantly more brown than black so i'm initially just going to start rolling my brailler's quite old it's not it's not something i use very often with a little touch of black Now this is chalk paint and it dries quite fast so you're going to have to be quite, quite swift and get it right to the edges, a bit of the black. Making sure that you get it all more black and I think I've got it all there okay so get it and I just need to make sure that I'm going the way I should be going which is and I want to try and get this corner here so I'm going to do this I'm not going to shift it I'm holding it with one hand this one and I'm making sure that I touch all of the parts. I'm now putting this hand on here so it doesn't shift. And I'm doing the same with the other hand. There we go. I'm going to have a little kick. So 
So I'm just going to come along again and pull a little bit more brown out. Oh, I think a bumblebee's came in the stable. Whoops! I'm working on the stable floor, so I have to make sure that there's no, because the stable floor is not exactly flat, so. Now, this is going to be the tricky part, is this join here, but I think I'm going to just go something like this. Now, I've got a cupboard door here, so I'm going to kind of push that in there to make sure that this part here at the cupboard door is done. Making sure that I, I think the bumblebee is actually coming over this way. <laughs> We're all about nature. Now I can do something about this when this is dry. I just don't want to go back to this just now. I'm quite happy actually with this joint apart from maybe doing something like that, which I think doesn't look too bad. Maybe this on there. Yeah, so I'm going to keep going to this next part. I don't need to do all my stamp for this one. Just maybe half of it. Ignore the busy bumblebee. <laughs> Martin was giving you a close up there, I wasn't expecting him. Sorry, Marty. Now, I'm just going to keep going along this line here and then I'm going to do some of this side and then I'll come back and I'll show you what I've done. Okay, so I got a bit gay and I just did it all, but I'm going to show you me doing the top. Now, these little edges here that I haven't got stamping in and here, I'll do those when I can take the stamp off the mount and it can get right into it, it can butt right into it. But I want to stamp the top first before I take it off of the mount. So I'm happy with this as a starter. And um, we're gonna really use it up and this is our sort of demarcation line here. I can see it with my eye. Um, and we're gonna flip the piece up and I'll do the top and the top's gonna be very similar, running the same way along the piece. So in case you found it a little bit difficult to imagine, this is how it looks from the front. Now, as I said, I've still got these little bits to fix. And this may be this one is a bit of a boo-boo and this bit up here. But apart from that, I actually really like it. I think the colours underneath really work. I think the green and the green is going to really complementary. And when we run our copper leaf down here, I think it's really going to work and I've got copper, I've got, well the handles actually are the original, if I can show you them. Um, they were, they were a little bit, they'd had varnish on them so what I did was I soaked them in um, white spirits and got all the, the bits of varnish and things off them and what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray them copper. I want them quite sleek and fine because I think it's really going to work, helps if I have, you know, with a piece. So. We'll crack on with our, our stamping on the top. Okay, so I've drawn my line again on the piece. Going the same sort of similar sort of kind of feel as the last way. So I'm just picking a point to start, which I think is here. It's good doing something on top of something because you can put all your weight on it. And I'll just ink up the next one. And I'm 
just going to do a kind of kind of here. Doesn't matter if you go over your chalk line; it's not a problem. Just a rough guide. And we'll fix all these little bits, you know, as we go. We just need to make sure there's something in there, you know, that doesn't make it look like it's it's been stamped, if you know what I mean. Makes it look less liney. Yeah. Can I just blend that in? Maybe a bit up here as well. Right, morning. So you can see what I'm doing. I mean, I'm just literally trying, I mean, to do my line as best I can. And then I'm just going to fill in um, like this spot up here, there, and then come from this side up. So I'm going to get on and do that. And then, um, and then we'll see what's next. There's little bits and parts that I'm going around with the edges, especially when I took the masking tape off. So I'm just showing you, I just took the dotty edges and I just put it up against it and just filled in some of those gaps so it doesn't look so gappy. Um, you know, here, the eye makes up the pattern. You don't have to stress too much about it. Um, it's just, you know, I don't want, I don't want the, the kind of like where that masking tape line has been. I've done the best I can with here. Um, this is where the gold's going to go anyway. Um, but you can kind of see it, but that, that's, I don't think that's the end of the world. So I'm just going to go along and just stamp all the wee bits at the edges and then we'll get on to the next part. So I have, um, gilding adhesive. Um, it's a sticky glue and I've got another tutorial if you watch my videos where you'll see me being able to do this, but you just paint it on, let it dry completely. It has to be really completely dry. And then when it's completely dry, you can add um, either gold or copper um, sheets to it. And then you brush it off with a brush and it leaves a nice bit of glamour to your piece. So I'm going to leave this for a good 10, 15 minutes. I put it exactly where the line is. I've just done, it's not tricky. I've just put some on my brush and just went like that up and down. Some bits thick, some bits thinner, all the way where my line is and the same on my top. And I've done a little bit of the gold on the feet. Um, so you make, you make sure you put your lid on this. And once you've used this, you need to put your brush in a pot of water because it ruins brushes. So make sure you, your, your brush is put in the water. So we'll let that dry for 10 minutes and we'll come back. Okay, so now we're gonna do the fun bit. And if you've never applied copper or gold leaf or any of the leaves before, um, as I said, I have got a video of how to apply it, but you just basically put on your adhesive and then put on your gold leaf. I mean, it's, it's pretty kind of um, self-explanatory. If you have any gaps, the, the gold leaf will only stick where you put the adhesive. So if you have any sort of gaps, you just go over the top. Um, I have bigger sheets here for like bigger areas. And you just go 
along it just making sure that you've got all your glue covered if not it'll be tacky um, and then once you've got and you've kind of like burnished it down a bit like this some people use a really soft brush but I use this really soft wallpaper brush and I go up and down because that gives you that up and down sort of motion so I do this it's very messy this process and that's how you that's how you apply your copper leaf and it goes everywhere so you just keep doing that across the whole thing it's just a process that you just you know it'll only stick where your glue is so you just pull off this and I'll do up to this top part here so I'm going to go on and I'm just going to copper leaf the top and this bit here and then we will um, go on to the next part fabulous so we've got all our um, copper leaf on it's done and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to furniture lacquer it um, I was going to wax it but I'm going to lacquer it and then we'll get our hardware on and we'll get our glamour shots okay so that's the piece finished it was stamped with the brand new serpentine stamp um, it looks absolutely amazing um, it was really easy to work with once I'd kind of got my, my head around it and do you know what? It, I think it's going to be one of my new favourite stamps. It's not my usual thing, but I just love how it's turned out. Um, if you want to see more furniture art, hop over to Made by Mar Marley, our channel. And um, thank you very much for watching. Hi, it's Lyle from Made by Marley and today I've got some really, really exciting stuff to show you. I have been very fortunate to have been sent um, all the way to, from the, you know, America to the UK the new two of the new IOD stamps and I'm going to be showing you what I'm going to be doing with this one today. This is the Bella stamp and it is right up my, my alleyway. This is a close-up of it and it's awesome. So using the Bella stamp, I am going to be doing this uh, vintage pantry cupboard and I've already kind of set the scene with some of the paints. But the first thing, I've actually done the side um, just to kind of put together what I'm going to do. But we'll start with this large surface area, we'll then do this and we'll do everything else around it. But I'm going to show you, we're just going to ink up our stamp and we're going to start applying it. We're going to do it in a row across here. Um, yeah. Okay, so ink your stamp, make sure you get plenty of paint onto it, especially if you've used chalk paint because it absorbs the paint um, really well. Make sure you've got it the right way up. And I want it to this, I need to put my glasses on, that might help. I want it to this edge here. Don't shift it. Always keep one hand on it, holding it where it is at all times. And then use your other hand to go round it. Just making sure that you're pushing down on all the corners and edges. Yeah? Like that. Now I kept this on the mount to do this one because this one's quite thin and it was easier and I cut it slightly just to get rid of the excess. Just have a wee kick, making sure you've got it all. And there we go. And on the side, I've done this, this one on the bottom. Um, so I'm just going to stamp up my little circle, my little floral. Now there's lots of elements in this stamp that you can, and we'll get to use those as we go. But at the moment I'm using the biggest pattern. Make sure you line it up. 
Now, this really would look amazing on, you know, walls, floors, um, interior design. Um, it's a lovely big stamp which lends itself to, to bigger pieces. So this is why I kind of chose this one because there's quite a lot of real estate that's got the sides. And we are just looking for this part here. It's fabulous to use. I've already had a fiddle about with it, so. Don't shift it. And I don't want to push down any further than that or it's going to go into this border here, which I'm actually going to paint, so. Um, Creak in my neck. There we go. And that's that. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to always stamp on a hard surface. If not, if you're stamping on a carpet and you work in a studio, then your stamp will not all be inked properly. Now we need to line this up with with this one. Again. So I'm just going to go on and fill this part and then we'll get to this door and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this door. So I've done this part now and if you were going for a black and white sort of look or you were doing walls then this looks absolutely perfect. It, the stamp um, comes with the bell stamp comes with this which means you could stamp this and this could be your centers you could again use this one and put it in here and it comes with some fantastic corners which I'm probably going to use next up and you know for corners so but what I'm going to do for this panel is instead of coming up and down that way because it's about the right size I'm going to go down with my circle this way and I'm probably going to do the same in this one here no, actually, I'll just put it in the centre of this one here. So it's the same principle. Ink up your stamp. And I'm leaving my centres blank because I'm going to do something um, in there. I'm leaving that as a little bit of a surprise. So again, make sure you push always one hand holding it so it doesn't shift and move and you don't have a nice image and when this prints out it has a really sort of cool sort of distressed look and this is why I'm going for a sort of old-fashioned it goes with a piece so I'm going to do like old-fashioned vintage wallpaper so we will so I'm going to just go and I'm going to stamp this actually there's a wee bit there that hasn't you shouldn't go back over it don't do what I do. Yeah. So I'm just going to go and do the next one here and the part here and then we'll talk about what I'm going to do next. Okay, so I'm just carrying on with, I've got a little corner one here. There's a bigger corner one if you've got something that, but I thought that's going to get a little bit busy with, I've put that one there. So we'll do this one on the corners. Plus it makes it maybe less complicated when you go to, well, if you're intending to paint it in and do what I've done. Um, if you're not intending to paint it in, then it doesn't make any odds. Um, don't need corners at the bottom of there. So what we're going to do with the drawers, let's have a look. I'll, I'll do one big one in this bottom cupboard. And I'm just going to put it right in the middle. So... I'm just eyeballing this. Same rules apply. Make sure that you've touched every part of your stamp. One hold, hand holding it and making sure that it's not shifting. There we go. So I'm happy with that. Making sure I've got those edges here and here. Have a wee peek and see if it's what you're looking for. And there we go. So I have this small corner, I think. See, I want to carry my circle because I've got circles on this side and I've got circles up there. I really think I should, even though they're not quite going to fit on. Or I could go for, 
Now that might could be quite nice. Mm, it's kind of going a different direction from the side, so I think I'll go with the circle. And I can just ha do a half stamp on both sides. And then we have to work out what we're doing with the drawers. Now, as I said, this would look absolutely stunning now with these. You could paint the inside and stamp this. You could stamp alternately here. You know, there's it's, it's loads of scope. I think you could do this forever in a day and not come up with the same design. tiny little gap between there and there where I'm not fussed on. Now you shouldn't really do this but I just don't want it and even though I'm going to be painting it's still, I'll just put a little bit of ink on there and see if I can just move it up slightly. Yeah. So that's done, that's done, this done. Now what we're going to do with our drawers and I think probably we'll just keep them, we'll just do this and this on both of the drawers because the detail that's going to go in here um, can go in the middle here and I've still got to think of like hardware and things so um, we'll ink up this one and I'm just going to do the corners okay so just wanting to show you a close-up of this it's really all going to come together soon and you'll start to understand the concept of what I'm going to do so I'll just go on and Do this, do this drawer. Now I'm wondering this time will I go this way and this way? Yes. I always like things to be a little bit different and this is going to be totally different once it's finished because we're going to start adding colour in in a minute. And one more. I probably will do some stamping on the green um, but let's just get to all the other work first. There now. If you find you've got bits like this, just you can put make put more ink on your stamp pad. I'm neither here nor there about it. I like that stamp look. That's what it's supposed to look like. It's been made like that. Right. Okay. So I'm just going to prep my paint, and then we'll start talking paint. Okay, for the next part, you're going to need to decide on your colours. I've chosen a cor corally red and a green. And what I've done is I've just, with an artist brush, just painted around. Now, I've left gaps. This is going to give it that aged sort of, of the era sort of time. I haven't, you know, been perfect in my painting. Don't worry if you've gone over the way. I've only given it one coat. We're going to put some wax and age all these things when we're done. And if there's any boo-boos like this on the side, don't worry about those because this these door frames are going to be painted round. So to show you what colours I did and how I did it, I just literally um, got my coral paint and I just painted it in right up to the edges like that and round. Try and sort out some of your brush strokes, especially if you're using a little artist brush. Although the wax will catch the detail of those, so it depends what you're looking for. I'm just going to bring that down. I've got a fine little brush that can get me in a little bit closer. A little bit too close. I'm just going to go... So I want to leave a bit of the white, but I want to kind of have... I just want it to look like it's been hand sort of stamped. So just use your small, really fine brush just to go kind of in around the details. Just cut in with that. And back to your big one. You could use a big paintbrush, but I didn't I didn't um I wanted to kind of get as much detail around it as I could and I thought I might go over my my stamps if I did that. So this is where you can sort some of your brush strokes out. And all I've did is I've kept the same theme. I've used 
the star, obviously I've got the colour of the stamp, I've got the coral and I've got the green and I may add more colour but I think at the moment I've got the darker teal colour at the top and that's what's going to go around the edges of these doors, the teal green. So you get the gist of that. So the next thing I did was, it's a custom green, it's this sort of colour and you want that a little bit more watery, I mean I'm using the lid just to water it down with my artist brush because that's going to help your chalk paint run better into these lines and I chose to do the inside line so all I did was I just painted down and as I said you don't be, need to be really hugely exact and I just painted this line here so I am going to actually just repeat this whole process up here so all this will be the coral and this line will be the green and on the sides I just compl completely left these circles just now okay so I'll go on and paint the whole of this and then we'll get to the exciting part so it's all painted in now and this is the stage in your work where it always looks kind of worse before it gets better so now we're going to pull it all together and the most exciting way that I'm going to do this and make it end up looking like it's an old vintage sort of yellowed sort of cabinet is I am going to cut up parts of the new paradise inlays and I am going to apply them to the centres of each one of these so I've already done the other side so what I've, I'll just show you quickly what I did. So I just picked any bits with the tails you'll find the other part of the bird on the other sheet so you know keep them because you can put a full bird together from those. So I was just cutting it out and I've got this kind of creamy yellow because this is what I'm going to age all the white with and like when you apply inlays anywhere else now I want this to go right to here to the edges of here. It can be quite thin at the edges just kind of like like it's kind of got a bit dirty. And then I want a nice thick, but not too thick, even layer for where my inlays are going to be positioned. So I'm happy with that. And I'm going to apply it um, this way, I think. So flatten it off, make sure there's no wrinkles. And embed it down with your hand and when you're happy with it you've got it stuck down like that take, take your damp cloth and just some people spritz them I've done it I do it multiple ways but this is the way that I find sorry this cabinet's really bangy this is the way I find that works best with me and if you're want to see how to apply inlays onto different things I have a few videos that you can watch so so that's that one and that one so say I wanted to put these two birds and I'm cutting the birds out but leaving the flowers just at an area where you think is going to work in your in your shape so I think this is going to work perfectly in here turn it round Make sure your checked area is at the back and again I want this to go right as near as I can to the edges like that before I thicken up the middles. Like that. And then a bit more paint on my brush so that I can get and I'm looking at my sort of general size smoothing out my wrinkles paint making sure that there's no lumps and bumps and boom smoothing it out with my hand make sure I'm pressing it down nice well worth taking the time to do this properly it kind of prevents that sort of wrinkly look when you pull it back up now I'm happy with that wet cloth dab 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 okay 
Now you have to leave these until they're perfectly dry and we'll take them all off later. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my pieces and parts in all of my, um, I will come back when I have to do these two drawers, but that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, so I've put the inlays on the front. They're all on and drying. Now I need to work out what I'm going to do with the drawers. And with the drawers, I'm just simply going to put the inlay pattern on. So I've painted this one red, so that'll be my colour underneath my buds. And I'm going to put a little bit of floral as well and hope that my positioning will be something like where the handle, and we'll maybe just bypass them. They're going to maybe lose their wee bits of their tails. So I'm going to put that in there like that. And you have to keep maybe moistening your cloth. It gets quite dry because you're, you know, patting the backs, which is absorbing the water off your cloth. So we're just going to do this. I recently put these inlays on a red piece of furniture and it looked absolutely stunning. So I know that this is going to be quite nice and we need a wee bit of a floral and I think what I'll do is I'll just take a floral from here and I'm going to kind of almost uh, cut it in half like around the floral like this so that I've got one and I can put this one on this way so I think what we'll do is we'll apply a red paint without any lumps and bumps here We'll put this one here with that. Um, let's just get the position of this one. is a bit big. However, if I trim, I'm just gonna shouldn't really lift them off once they're down, but I just want to get rid of that bit of paper. Um, it's gonna be a little bit big. I think I'll do go for something a little bit more delicate, maybe a piece of this instead. And all these pieces and parts. I've just used up as I've went along, so I'm just going to do something like this. A little bit of red. Like that. And pop that there. Wet cloth. And wet cloth. And I'm just going to do the drawer above, and then what I'm going to do is, off camera, I'm just going to move around to the side and I'm going to start doing exactly the same thing on that other side while this is all drying so that we can move on to the next stage. Okay, the whole piece has been done now, sides, both sides and the front and now I'm on the last sort of finishing touches. Now if you see here what I've done is I've dry brushed just to age it and I've given it some sanding which I'll show you in a minute. And I've sanded around here and distressed some of the edges. And I'm just going to show you what I did on this piece here. So a little brush. Now you need to offload it. You can't have, and it's that sort of creamy colour that I'm going for. And all I did was I just brushed this. I think we could do with it being a little bit more orangey. I just brushed this all over the piece. I tried to keep it in one direction. Now on this one, I've done some stamping here and here, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Hang on, my brush is needing off a little a bit more. That's it. It's just to kind of soften this line and it gives it a sort of more sort of aged, aged sort of look that you're kind of, you're kind of looking for. Um, I'm just going to have to put a little bit of orange on this. Um, and I'm not really going to do too much on this. This had a couple of coats I'll just maybe do here and there on that maybe just on the top and in that area there that's all probably that needs and maybe a little bit more so you just kind of like I'm just kind of just kind of aging it really um I'm not being too you know careful I'm I'm just kind of like some of it can be darker than other areas it just just how I did it up here, you know, where I, I kind of like, uh, and you can go back and you can do more or you can do less depending on on what you think it needs. And this just kind of like blends that line where there's a join and it kind of just like this colour 
is more in line with this as opposed to the glaring red. So that's all the reason. And if you kind of have this darker line around here, it gives it a little bit of shade as well. How you apply this really is up to you now. I stamped with the big one that goes in the middle here, here, here and here and just put the corners on it. And I put the circle on there just to give it a little bit more interest. And there's a little bit too much orange in there, but I'm just going to keep it because that looks quite good. And so with this one, I'm just kind of like going to go maybe just there and maybe just a wee bit around the edges. Just to age it up a bit. Now we're going to age it a little bit more because I've got a fine grit and a heavy grit. Under this, the, under this piece is brown, but it obviously it had the white on it. So you can either take it to the white when you sand it or wet distress it back to the white. So if you wanted to wet distress, you would just get your cloth and just rub it like that. And that will take it to the white, but I'm wanting to go right down to the wood. So like that. Now you don't want to go crazy with this. This is where, you know, caution just here and there. I still need to do my yellow across there. I've forgotten that part. So here I want to do, I really want this chipped look at the top. Can you see that? That close up in that matter. The more you kind of take away, just here and there, do not sand all your edges. That's not how, you know, it would be distressed through the years. That just here or there, where it's been bumped and banged, that's probably enough for there. And maybe a little bit round here, I can just bring back some of the white. Don't worry about these scratch marks. They'll come off when you lacquer it. Some white there, and maybe a bit heavier here. So I'm going to go on and I'm going to distress the rest of this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply furniture lacquer over the top of it. Now, these are still live. You have to be really careful. One coat over them quickly. Don't labour the point and brush it. You'll set them off again and they'll all run. One quick down your inlays. Boom. Don't touch them again. You can spray varnish them first with spray lacquer and let it dry and then do it. Or you can wax them. But again, don't be waxing crazy. Just wax, leave because you'll start and they'll start running. So... That's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to um, lacquer it and then I'm going to apply some dark wax in these edges here and possibly some of this jade colour. So I'm, I'm in my bathroom and what I'm actually going to show you is the Bella stamp that we put on the piece of furniture. How easy it is to do, just do something in your home. I, this is reclaimed wood that I've had here for a wee while and I distressed it, made it look aged and a bit dirty and uh, Martin just put a wee shelf on it. It was kind of rough and ready but that was what I was looking for at the time and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stamp it with the Bella stamp. So I'm just going to remove my, my little wreath here. I don't actually know how it's attached under here. Pin I think. Um, I'll set that to the side. I'm going to use blue ink because my walls are blue and I'm going to just start the way I did the other day. I've, this time I've got the centre in it. When I did the piece of furniture um, over in the stable in the studio, I didn't have the centre in it because obviously I put the inlays in it. So it was just to give you a better idea of how it would work on home decor. Uh -huh. I've never quite filmed anything in my bath before, but this is where I am. So I'm going to start this edge over here and I'm just going to ink up my stamp. Just the same way, I'm using a little tiny table, so we'll see how that goes. Again, these are not the smoothest um, planks of wood to work on, so it's probably going to come out just a little bit like it's a little bit distressed but that's okay I don't mind that if you've got nice smooth walls then this will be easy so I'm just going to do my next one here and then I'm going to fill the top row with the with the fancy schmancy bit that goes in the middle 
So I'm just going to work along this top row first. Off camera, I was just doing a little bit of playing and planning just to see where I was going to go. I couldn't quite fit two down this way before I hit the row top bath. So I'm just going to do in between these ones like this. And I just wanted to see what the sort of floral element looked like in the middle. So I'm just going to, you know, like kind of almost just position that there because there's the other stamps that we can put on the top of here. So um, I'm not too worried about that. The blue is slightly more China blue than my navy blue, but, um, but I'm not too bothered about that. There's other blues in the room, so um, I'm okay with that. I'm wondering whether I'll show you what my plan is for the plan to put this if it fits in here like this so let's have a wee look and see if we can do that I can already see by my eye I'm a little bit, bit off but I will straighten up with this I'm going to go down a little bit deeper with this one because I keep getting that gap that I don't want yeah so I'll show you how I stamp this one in the middle and then I'll do a little bit more off camera because it must be quite boring. I think it's going to be nice when it's done. And this is what I was trying to explain. Really, these, because of the sheer size of them, they really are going to lend themselves to, to wall decor. Now, I could have kept this on the stamp, um, but I wanted to just put it in by hand so because of the wooden boards I want to be able to press it underneath so that it all starts stamping there like that so I'm just going to go on I'm going to do a circle here So you can see how easy it is to create like a really nice focal point in your room. I might do one up here. I might not. Anyway, I'm going to go on and do a few more just so you can get a better idea of what I'm doing. Okay, so I've done the stamping all the way along. I've added the sort of triangle shape that's in the Bella stamp at the top. And this is my last one. And I really like it. I'm going to go and do the rest at some point, but it was just to give you a, a show of how it looked. Um, I'm really pleased with it. So I'm just going to sort everything out and get the ink off my bath and we'll take some photos of it. Okay, so it's finished. It literally took me about 20 minutes. It doesn't take long. It has maximum impact. The Bella stamp is fantastic. And as you can see, it's really versatile. With the first piece, we made, we, we made a piece of furniture. We added the inlays and all the different bits and pieces to create a piece of furniture. And at this point in time, we've just used it again to make a feature wall in a small bathroom. You could do a big wall if you wanted to, and you could put it in lots of different variations, different connotations of how you want to put it. It's a really versatile stamp, the Bella stamp. So that's the two to uh, the wall decor and the piece of furniture that I've um, 
uh, used to create beautiful home decor with the Bella stamp. Um, as you can see, it's got many uses. You could use it forever in a day, either just on its own with inlays, painted, not painted. It's just so much choice. Brilliant for walls, great for furniture, fabrics. So um, I've been Lel from Made by Marley and this has been a video for IOD and um, if you want to hop over to my channel at Made by Marley you can see other um, furniture art. I really hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you can get your hands on these products soon and I can't wait to see what everybody does with them and their interpretation of how you can use the stamps. I've been Lael from Made by Marley. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed using all those lovely new products. Um, if you like what you see, please consider subscribing, push the bell so you're notified when Martin and I release a new video and if you like it, click your like it. and. Um, if there's anything that you want to see me do in the future, any techniques or maybe a deep delve into stamping or into colours or anything at all, just leave me a comment and um, I'll see what I can do in my next video. Thank you.